Welcome to episode four, I believe, of the Equipped Collective Podcast. As you can tell today, I am joined by a very good friend of mine, before I say special guest, Mr. Andy Norton. Andy, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, and then we'll talk about what we're talking about there. So I'm a local pastor within the New Forest, um, and uh, yeah, I lead a congregation of approximately around 120 um, congregants. Uh, My background is youth work, so passionate about the next generation. Um, and seeing them raised, uh, you know, within the life of the church, uh, growing in truth and going out and making a difference in the world. Um, yeah, as a pastor, I'm passionate that people come to know the truth, mm-hmm. be set free by the truth, and uh, yeah, go out into the world and, and make Jesus known. So as a church, we have a mission statement to know Jesus Christ, mm. but to know the Jesus Christ of the Word, mm-hmm. the living Word, mm-hmm. um, and to go make him known. Yeah. So, you know, it is discipleship. It's evangelism and mission. So yeah. that's me. Um, I'm a family man, married uh, to an amazing woman, Nikki, and uh, two awesome kids. Uh, not so much kids anymore. <laughs> 17 and, uh, and 14. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Amazing. And maybe just so we can have a, a quick icebreaker. What's your favorite movie of all time? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to say Anchorman to you, don't I? Because uh, whenever we get together, it seems to be quoted. Yeah. Um, no, no, I've got, I've got a whole load. Um, that's really, really difficult, Jay. Uh, that is really, really difficult. Um, I'm a big fan of a, a film called Almost Famous about a, mm. a, young, uh, a, a young person who's a, a beyond his years, who's a journalist uh, on a tour with a, a rock band and just kind of the just the mess that gets mm. caught up within the world. And I think it's a beautiful picture really of how the world can kind of influence and, sp- and, and cause so much destruction. Yeah. Um, and you see this whole destruction, but uh, it's desperation for this guy to tell the truth yeah. um, of this uh, band who's wrestling with coming to fame. Yeah. I, I didn't prepare you for that, so that was a good answer. Um, so, uh, so today we're talking about a topic that me, well, me and Andy, when we meet up, I'd say we talk about a, a variety of things. And we, we, we met up last week and you said we actually should have just press record on our conversation last week. Yeah, we were in a coffee shop. We were in a coffee I'm shop. Sure get the best sound. The audio might not have been as good. But today what we're going to talk about is uh, relative truth. And if if that word sounds perhaps a bit um, foreign or a bit snazzy or philosophical, all we really mean by that is the phrase where you maybe have heard it a lot in culture, which is my truth, your truth. And more specifically, um, what Andy's hopefully going to shed some light on us for is how do we understand that Jesus claims to be definitive truth Mm. in a world where truth is now seen as me, you, we can have our own views, relative. Mm. So that's what we're going to shed some light on today. So I think this episode is going to be a real blessing and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So Andy, first of all, my first question would be this is, why do you believe that relative truth, as in something can be true for you, but doesn't have to be true for me? Why do you think relative truth is popular, especially in 2024? Sure. So uh, we live in a day and age. Um, post enlightenment is probably what I would say. You know, and the the rise of the 1970s, the sexual revolution, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, Carl Truman talks a lot about this um, in in his book. But we live in a day and age which is ultimately led by feelings based. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas you look at uh, Orthodox Christianity, it's you know it's very much a um, a faith that yes of course it impacts our feelings but it's this word which gets our feelings in check mm. you know that our mm. feelings line up with scripture not the yeah, other way yeah. around and so relative truth um age i think is popular because we live in a day and age where feelings particularly have become um the be all and end all mm. and um, mm. and what i mean by that i you know i'm not saying we must disregard emotions sure. you know yeah. it's important as pastors you know that we're <laughs> you know we're emotionally aware of, of people's needs and that we're we're being sensitive to people's needs but when when our emotions lead the way mm-hmm. when our emotions lead um our actions mm. and our motives away from god mm. and don't line up with scripture that that that's dangerous yeah, you know, yeah. because it is a matter of life and death mm. Mm. so um why is it popular today i think we live in a we live in a society with multiple messages and where, yeah. particularly today, um, we want uh, inclusion, we want yeah. equality, um, and of course, you know, within Christ, we want that mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Christ has done that; He's provided a way for that. But um, but we want inclusion within the context of it's our true. emotions being met yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and living for 
what is right for me mm, mm. Um, as opposed to what God says is right for me. Yeah, yeah. no, that's really interesting. And I think I, perhaps maybe you picked up on it as well. Uh, uh, I, gu- I guess it'd be very easy to say, oh, this is more of a just a religious discussion of truth is just to do with religious beliefs. But I think we were reflecting the other day that actually this can pollute, I guess maybe is a good word, every area of someone's life and eventually can even affect how we behave. You know, like we were talking about someone that we know that um, is so right in their own mind, right in their own mind that, that they can't be told that something is objectively right or wrong. Yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, just maybe a, a precursor is that obviously we're coming at this from a biblical perspective and we believe that Jesus is the truth. But this is actually for, for all areas of life, isn't it? You know, yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, we want to see people um, as holistic mm. uh, individuals. We want to see people uh, whole. Yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, the truth coming into that mm-hmm. will bring the full truth. Yeah. And with it, bring the fullness of life. Sure. And so we're talking about wholeness here. Sure. Well, I'm going to go straight in to Bible verse. All right. John 14, 6. Well, that's the one. Yeah. Jesus says, <laughs> Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus doesn't really sound too relative right there. It's, it's fair to say it's, it's a pretty objective claim that Jesus is saying, I am the truth. Yeah. How do we reconcile and understand that in modern day society? How do we understand Jesus' words claiming to be the truth? Well, I think this is the reality, isn't it? Uh, this, this claim 2,000 years ago um, had a sting in it. <laughs> and... <laughs> And let's be honest, it has yeah. a sting in it today. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's a lot harder today. I don't, I don't think it was any harder 2,000 years ago, mm. um, you know, for the, the, the Jewish, the Roman, the Greek, yeah. you know, civilization who was listening to this. The reality is this issue of relative truth, living for self, you mm-hmm. know, my truth. Mm-hmm. I mean, the key word there is my, mm-hmm. my you know, yeah, yeah. I. Um, as opposed to as opposed to Christ, so how do we, how do we how do we bridge this into today's society? It's no different than how do we bridge mm. it in that society. Mm. The issue has always been since the beginning in the garden with the fall, right? Yeah. Now, what do we see there right in the very beginning? Mm. So in the beginning, Adam and Eve were listening to God's word, mm. and another word was spoken, mm. and they chose to give in to the feeling, yeah, of that word, yeah, the right. relief of that word, and to supersede it mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so god says and now i say right yeah um and so it's no different within the context today but i suppose that the statement itself is offensive sure is what i is why i want to say um i was preaching about this um uh, a couple of weeks ago um in a family service and saying and, and picked it up even actually this week on in, on sunday to ask the question did jesus ever offend people yeah, he did, <laughs> because that statement is offensive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the Pharisees, it was extremely offensive, yeah. what he was saying. Yeah. Um, one, because obviously they didn't seem to be the son of God, mm. they didn't believe the claim of what he was saying about himself. And of course, where did that lead to? It led mm. to them, you know, selfishly pursuing their own power yeah. to put him to death. Mm. Um, mm. So this claim, I think, first and foremost, is no different in Jesus' day sure. as it is to us today, because the whole point of Jesus' statement in that, the whole reason Jesus had to come mm. was to deal with the very issue of self, Yeah, yeah, which is relative truth. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. I think especially grasping and understanding that this has been a problem, I guess, since Genesis, is Satan's first lie is, yeah, yeah. did God really say? You know, he's questioning the, the truth and the integrity of, is God, is God actually going to back what he said? And I think Jesus' description of Satan is, is the father of lies, that lying is his native tongue. So actually, I think perhaps to understand what's happening spiritually as well with truth, that Satan, Satan hates truth, right? Like, would it be clear to say that? 100%. And we have to remember as well, what does it tell us? What does it tell us in Ephesians? That your, your, your battle is not against flesh and blood, right? Yeah. So this is the really difficult thing. When people are wrestling with a whole array of things and, and you know, they've been brought into a world, anyone who is you know, our age and younger mm. has been brought in the post enlightenment world where yeah. feelings have been so elevated that you mm. have to understand that when you're dealing with an individual who's saying, well, hang on, that, that's not right. Mm. They've been taught one thing. Right, yeah. They, they've, they've lived in a culture that's taught them one thing, but yeah. what's going on behind it? Mm. You know, it's the spiritual battle that's going on behind it. It's the force of the evil 
that wants to deceive. I mean, Satan rules around like the pr prowling lion, mm. stealing, killing, destroying. Yeah. Right? We see deception throughout the whole of the Bible, mm. you know, right mm. there in the garden. Yeah. You know, you've got Laban with Leah, you've got, you've got, you've got Jacob with his father, I mean, dysfunctional <laughs> family, you know. It's Jeremy Carlos. I mean, it is, it's Jeremy Carlos there. Don't tell me the Bible hasn't got juicy drama. Yeah. You know? it's, it's fantastic read. <laughs> you know, so you see deception all the way through the Bible. Yeah. Of course, when we get into the, into the New Testament, you've even got deception within the church. Yeah. Right? Under the guise of, you know, false teachers, false prophets, who have given in to lustful desires. Mm. They would rather have their ears tickled. And so we're surrounded with this issue mm. of deception and deception is what? Mm -hmm. It's distortion of the truth. Right. And so when we're talking about relative truth, we're talking about a deception mm. and distortion of the truth of God, who mm. is the, and Jesus particularly, who is the word in the beginning, the word that became flesh, and, sure. and, and the one in whom this whole book is about. Right? Yeah. That's testifying to who he mm. is and helping to redefine yeah. back to the truth of what yeah. he spoke in the first place of who you and I are sure. in him, mm. not who you and I are in ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. That's really helpful. So, so coming back to like the John 14, six bit, we, we kind of spoke about how, how like that would have been hard for them to believe then in Genesis, there seems to be a gradual, like you say, that, that deception kind of slowly makes its way through scripture and definitely in modern day when Jesus says he is the truth. Yeah. That's like a, that's a huge, huge statement yeah. right how do we because that sounds really nice doesn't it but how do we actually like what does jesus actually mean sure when he says i am the truth yeah like, sure what does that mean well we've got to put the three things together yes sure you know, context yeah. is everything context context is king context is king. <laughs> <laughs> so take take i think again i mentioned this on sunday andrew orlerton talks about it he says if you take the if you take the the text out of context you're left with a con you're left with a lie right so so context is important so <laughs> don't just cherry pick a verse guys go and read the whole thing around yeah it. so you know we have to look at that whole statement of what jesus sure. is saying there, yeah right so he says i am the way mm. okay what does that mean well this is coming in the context of thomas you know asking him a question saying yeah but you, you're leaving us soon yeah. this is around the table you know jesus loved to do this again another point with this as well is what do we see with jesus jesus builds community yeah again so if you're not part, part of the community be part and parcel of the community. <laughs> um, so he sat around with his friends having, having a meal. He said, I'm going to be leaving you soon, but you know, don't worry, I'm going to be going and prepare a room for you at my father's house. Right? Mm. And Thomas kicks up and he says, he says, but how do we know the way? How do, mm. how do we know how to get there? You know, mm. Again, you know, this, is, this is a process of mm. learning. These guys walked with him for three years and yeah. they didn't quite get it. Yeah. So again, this helps us, doesn't it? That sure. This isn't sometimes an immediate thing. Mm. That is a little bit of truth upon a little bit of truth that you know, comes in. But the fundamental truth of what Jesus says mm. in the statement, we have to put our trust in it. He, that's what he was trying to help them to understand. Mm. You need to know this if you are going to be my disciples. Yeah. So he says, I'm the way. So everything that I've been showing you, everything that I've been telling you, everything I've been revealing to you, you know, as your teacher, as your Messiah, mm. you know, follow that way, mm. mm. and it will lead you to me. Mm. And uh, and what's it leading to? Mm. So let's skip beyond truth, and we'll come back to truth. Yeah, it's leading to life. Sure. Because the issue is that in serving ourselves and living for ourselves, you know, the gospel tells us that the wages of that sin. Mm. which is to serve self over serving God, is death. Mm. And so outside of following Christ, mm. outside of his truth, yeah. outside of him is death. Mm. But if we follow in his way, if we listen to his words, if we believe what he said is true, mm. and he is the word, you have mm. to remember that. Jesus is the word in the beginning, the word who became flesh. Uh, what he says is true. And what does he say? The first thing he does when he comes comes out from the wilderness after his baptism he he wanders around and it says he goes from town to town and what's the worst he's saying repent mm. for the kingdom of god is near yeah my kingdom is near life is near yeah but you have to turn away mm. from your sin you have to turn away from your relative truth you have to turn mm. away from serving yourself yeah and believe in me mm -hmm. and trust for salvation and life and the way to my father's house where I'm going and preparing a room for you. I think that's amazing, mm. by the way. That God's preparing a room for mm. you and for me and for all those who put a trust in him, mm. with him for all eternity. If we could trust in that, 
you know, and you'll have life. Mm. So that's what truth means. The truth is actually that we are prepared to lay down, serve in self, and lay down these beliefs that we create mm. to serve ourself. Yeah. Our selfish desires, whatever they might be, the desires of the flesh, you know, wicked and corrupt things, mm. to lay that all down mm. for what he says. Mm. And so this is about, we might redefine things all the time as Satan redefines yeah. the words that Jesus, right. you know, that God himself spoke yeah, in yeah, the yeah. garden. He yeah. redefines it. Is that really what God says? Yeah. And that's what we do. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure God doesn't mean that yeah. in order to appeal to our own relative truth. Sure. But what he says. Mm. And so we, we then submit and we yield to his definition yeah. and to what he says. And I think, you know, to, to put this all into context, today we have a whole redefining of, of things like love. Mm. Um, what is love? Mm. The Bible tells us God is love. Mm. And so if God is love, we have to look at the character and nature of Jesus, who is the perfect visible image yeah. of the invisible God in order to understand what love looks like. Mm. Mm. And he was loving enough to speak the truth sure. in order, why? Because his love and longing mm. for them to not be in death, but into yeah. in life and to be in his father's house. Mm. With yeah. Which when we understand it like that, we see the grace and we see the love of God. Mm. And that's a far loving thing than actually allowing us to live sure. in darkness. Yeah, no, it's really helpful. And I think, I think the thing I picked up on from what you said about Jesus uh, being the truth, and, and I guess this is, this is where, like you said, about context and understanding the narrative of Scripture yeah. is another way we know that Jesus is true is, well, because he's, he's, he said and predicted that he was going to, he was going to die and three days later he was going to yeah, yeah. rebuild the temple yeah sure and he did so so like so i think it's vastly different so when we say that jesus is true yeah. we're not saying oh he had some sayings that are just really beneficial for me sure we're actually saying objectively jesus has proved that he is who he said yeah, he is. yeah absolutely and i guess that was the issue with the pharisees right sure. who who really were opposed and offended by yeah we spoke about that briefly earlier on and yeah. of course, they're offended because he was claiming to be God's son. Yeah. But how do we know Jesus is God's son? Well, read through the Old Testament. I mean, you looked at that chat and brilliant. I mean, you know, go, go, <laughs> go watch that, come back. Pause it here, go watch that, come back. Um, but, you know, in that context, we see Jesus in the Old Testament yeah. again and again and again prophesied. You know, there's foreshadows, a picture of Moses and what Je Moses is doing by parting the seas and the people traveling through the waters. Right. You know, the picture that Jesus gives us of starting with baptism, that's where mm. we start, that Jesus is the one who leads us out sure. from death mm. across the waters mm. into the promised land, into that mm. promised home that he has secured mm. for us okay you know you've got pictures everywhere of jesus you've got turn to isaiah mm. you know read the account of the cross mm. in its detail that is totally mirrored by four eyewitness accounts in mm. the gospels yeah you know and other sources outside of the bible you yeah. know pliny and others you know who who record that event that this is the one that god foretold from the very beginning in the garden that mm. one would come and crush the serpent's head the one who deceived you he's going to mm. do away with that guy he's mm. going to bring you out of the lion into the truth mm. you will know the truth and the truth will set mm. you free mm. liberty life mm. so yeah i think there's probably so, enough you know in the old testament old testament that we then see fulfilled in the new yeah. testament to give us absolute confidence yeah. that what Jesus says of himself is true. Mm -hmm. like Jesus went around and said, I am in the Father and the Father is me. Yeah. You know, that I am the Father, I am the Father, I am the, and the Father <laughs> are one. Well, well, get your words out, you know, put your teeth in. So, you know, we're yeah. one, yeah, we're yeah, one. Yeah. I only do the will of my Father. Yeah. You know, they, this is the, the beautiful thing of the Trinity. Maybe you need to look at that at another point. Uh, Part two, yeah, yeah. Trinity. But, um, you know, the reality is we can see yeah. Jesus fulfilled yeah. every single one of those prophecies. Mm, mm. And then you've got Jesus himself who's using the words of the Old Testament in mm. his response. I mean, uh, I read somewhere the other day, you've got, you got 1,800 verses in the Gospels and 10% of them is Jesus quoting the Old Testament wow. in order to show them and help them mm. to understand yeah. who he is, yeah. that he is the Son of God, that yeah. he is the truth. Yeah. It's good stuff. There's enough Mad. evidence there. Mad. And then you've got, obviously, other surrounding evidence around that sure. as well. To our, within archaeology and yeah, yeah. other sources, you know, yeah. in history um, and other writings mm -hmm. that just, again, elevate yeah. um, that this man existed yeah. and that his words were true yeah. and that these events took place. Mm. And so if that's the case and he makes this claim 
that yeah. there is no other way mm. to life, mm. no other way to God, yeah. and through Him, we're left to ask the question: So what? Yeah. yeah. What am I going to do with that? Yeah. Yeah. And I know what I've done with it. And yeah. You know what you've done with yeah. it. But yeah. the question, you know, maybe for someone to watch him, what do you, what do you mm. make of that? What are you yeah. going to do? And for me, putting my trust in that has totally radically changed my life. I mean, yeah. I am a different person mm. than who I once mm. was. I served myself. I have yeah. no desire for that any longer. Mm. This thoughts creep in. You submit it under truth. Mm. And there's liberty and there's peace and there's freedom. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's good. Um, that was, that was good. I was, I feel like I need to, I feel like I need to, feel like I need to it was good. That was very, really good. I really love what you said about how, yeah, how, how Jesus's word is truth specifically and, and, and how like other people affirm that the old Testament affirms that. And I think I, I was just thinking, even thinking about Jesus's baptism, obviously God, the father says, this is my son, you know, in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes, comes. It's the Trinity moment. you know, so, so, so the father affirming the son, the spirit yeah. affirming the truth. The son. And then the first thing when we see that Jesus goes into the wilderness, God's just said, this is my son with him. I'm well pleased. Satan says, if you are the son of God. So it's interesting that always Satan attacks truth, isn't it? You know, he doesn't attack lies. Great to see that. He attacks truth. So how would you, because all that stuff is fantastic, but how, but how do you then respond to someone who, who you know, say you're sharing the gospel with someone and, and they say, okay, well, that, that's great about Jesus, but actually I've got my, I've got my own stuff and Jesus can be true for you. That doesn't necessarily have to be true for me. How do we like objectively say, no, gee, this guy is, yeah. he, he is who he says he is. Well, that's one of the biggest and hardest things, right? Um, all you can do is present. Sure. And uh, who, who, whose role is it to bring salvation? Yeah. Freedom? And this is one of the hardest things as pastors because you're longing for people to come into the truth, to come into freedom, yeah. to come into liberty. But I can't do that work. Mm. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So um, I'd say if you're if you're in a conversation with that and you just can't get beyond that, you just need to get on your knees and pray mm. and ask God to do His His yeah, part. Yeah. Um, we have to be faithful ministers of the Word. We have sure. to keep bringing the truth. We can keep asking questions. Well, you know, if sometimes what you find is that someone says, "No, no, I'm a Christian. I believe in I mm. believe in the Bible," but then they get stuck on something. Mm. And so. You know, all you can do is present what it says, go back yeah. to the source, whatever they might be struggling to say, well, what do you make of this? Yeah. And Jesus did that all the time. Mm. He, you know, he, he didn't always make direct statements. Occasionally he did, mm -hmm. you know, woman of the world, he spoke very directly into that situation. Right. Yeah, again, yeah. with great hospitality, great, yeah. great gentleness. Mm. Again, that's a lesson for us to learn that mm. that's what is love. Well, love is patient, love is kind. It doesn't yeah. boast, but it revels and yeah. delights in the truth. And so you have to hold those things in tension, mm. but but a, what you would see Jesus do fairly frequently was to throw questions back out, mm. you know, and I think questions are a good way. Well, what do you make of this? Mm. You know, when you say you put your trust in Jesus, well, Jesus said this in mm. relation to that. So what's your understanding of that? Yeah. And we have to seek to understand. Mm. I mean, you see that, you see that um, with um, uh, Philip and the Ethiopian uh, mm. eunuch. Right? Yeah. Seeking to understand. Yeah. You see it with um, Paul up at Mars Hill. Where he's wandering around seeking to understand yeah. what's going on in that's that good. in that um in that uh, world in that, yeah, in, that thinking, in that philosophy in that yeah. culture seeking to understand so that he can then bridge the gospel. Mm. So sometimes we just go in wholeheartedly like a fire blazing because we're longing for people to know the mm. truth. It's sometimes probably not the best way. Mm. Um, we were having a chat earlier on weren't we, about sanctification. Do you want to bring yeah. that scripture now because I think that's probably. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, we were saying um, Jesus's prayer for his people in John 17, which I recommend maybe go and read because it's, it, it's beautiful words. And uh, one of the things that Jesus says in that prayer is when praying to the Father, sanctify them by the truth. Yeah. Your word is truth. So God clearly has an extremely high view yeah. of truth, right? Yeah. And, and that sanctification process like you say, it's a process. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah, and I mean, you know, <laughs> I've been in the church, grew up in the church, uh, strayed away from the church, fell into the lie of relative truth, served myself for a number of years, mm. and God hit me one night on the on the road with the truth of where I was heading. Yeah, uh, to a point where I, you know, broke down mm. in tears, mm. you know, relenting, you know, ev not relenting, sorry pouring out everything that was upon my heart yeah. that I was wrestling with to him, but it all came out like, 
<laughs> you know, because I didn't have the words. Yeah. And, and I just remember saying, Lord, help. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Now, I didn't get from there to here. Yeah. Like that. Mm. There was a moment where sure. where there was the revelation that, no, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. And I'm, I know that that's going to be a cost to me now. If you want to be my disciple, you know, lay down yeah. your life. Yeah. Take up your cross, follow mm. me. And leave that world behind. And I did that. I had to leave that world behind and go on a journey with God. Mm. That has led me, you know, the last sort of 20 plus years yeah. to where I'm at now. And, and by the grace of God and probably through the prayer of Jesus, yeah. you know, who intercedes on our behalf. And he's probably asked, you know, doing that prayer all the time for, yeah. for, for his people yeah. to sanctify us in the truth. Yeah. And, you know, that I'll, I'll be honest, I, I've been in previous churches where, you know, and even taught to young people things which I would now consider wrong, mm. you know, and I've had the great blessing to reconnect with some of them and apologize to them mm. and say, you know, what I told you was wrong and correct that, you know, and to bring the scripture as it says, you know, it, it's good to correct, to rebuke, yeah. to, and so it's done that in my life. And now my, my role is to do that in, in the life of others. So, yeah. So yeah, it's a process. So to come back to uh, your question of the, the interaction with someone else, it, you've got to learn patience, right? Sure. Because love is patient, yeah. love is kind. To go on the process with them, to realize that they have been living one way for so long, mm -hmm. you know, and you look at uh, even in Paul's writings, you know, and he says, you know, that they've got the argument between the, between the Greek and the, and the Jewish about, you know, the, the non-essential things yeah. sometimes, yeah. right? Like, he says, like, if it's a stumbling block for them, you know, mm. then don't, don't, yeah. don't impose it upon them. Yeah. But, you know, they were on a process. Mm. You and I are on a process all the time as we get more and more into this word, more and more truth will come in. And by that, we will be greatly sanctified. So yeah. we have to have great patience with people, yeah. realizing that God has been patient and gracious, gracious with you and mm. I. You know, you look at the accounts throughout the Old Testament and God sending like warning of judgment. Mm. You know, what is that warning of judgment? Come back to me, mm. come back to truth. Yeah. But he's being patient with them. Sure. He's showing mercy to them. Yeah, yeah. He's showing grace to them. Yeah. You know, an opportunity to turn around, you know, and, and, and God's doing that even still mm. today because he's a God of mercy. Yeah. He's a God of grace mm. who longs for his children to come back to him. Yeah. And the route to come back to him is through Jesus, who's the way, mm. the truth, and the life. Mm. That's fantastic. That's, it's really good. And I think it's great to paint that picture of, of why it's actually good news that <laughs> God that God loves truth. Well, it, I think, and we were kind of, we've, we've spoken many times about, I mean, I think, and I think it's good, clear to say that, like you said, the truth is so important, but also what is as important is how we communicate the truth. Yeah. You know, I think there's a first Peter where he says, let your gentleness be evident yes. to all, and, yes. you know, give a reason for your faith in gentleness. So yeah. I think that's, you know, we're massively, we're lovers of the truth, right? Yeah. We're also lovers of people. Yeah. And, and actually, I think the myth we believe in our culture is if I love you, I therefore can't tell you the truth. Yeah. You know, if you've done something wrong, if I have to say something that's a little bit challenging, a little bit icky, <laughs> it can't be loving for me to say that to you. But actually, like you mentioned, first Corinthians, actually love and truth seem to be going hand in hand. 100%. 100%. C.S. Lewis puts it really well, doesn't he? I can't remember uh, his exact words, but he says, you know, love is not like to do with uh, willful affection yeah. and feelings love true love is being prepared to speak the truth for the ultimate good of that person mm -hmm. and and that and that that's what we see in christ you know yeah. christ is prepared to speak the truth i mean you know the woman at the well i, I keep coming back to it it's my it, you probably guess it's my baseline for pastoral ministry right you know how do we take truth but how do we deal with it in kindness and gentleness mm -hmm. you know what does jesus do there first thing he does is he sends his disciples away mm -hmm. why because he knows that the mighty clan versus why is gonna is not gonna be a good thing. So first of all, past story, we you know, let's do that one to one. Let's not bring yeah. that person's shame in yeah, into yeah. the light, you know. That's not who that's not who Christ is, you know. But he doesn't shy away from speaking mm. the truth in that. Mm. But he first of all bridges the gap, he crosses over the cultural divide, he crosses over all of the uncomfortableness and he breaks the silence. Yeah. And then he asks for a drink mm. from her pot. Mm. You know, a dog. Yeah, you know, in their yeah. context, yes. you know, and within their within yeah. their times, and then he gently mm. asks questions mm. for her to open up, mm. and then mm. brings the truth. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's a beautiful picture for yeah. us. Yeah, How yeah. And and why did Jesus do that? Mm. Jesus did it because he wanted her in his home. Sure, he wanted her in a 
in his father's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's the reality of all this, right? That for those who come into the light, you know, the light of Jesus Christ that come out of the darkness belong to him. Mm. But those who choose to remain in darkness have chosen that for that willfully mm. themselves. Mm. And so Jesus always will give the opportunity. And maybe there's people even watching now, and this is the first time you've heard this. Mm. This is God giving you the opportunity. Mm. And we have the responsibility in how we respond. Yeah. But in God sending out his word of truth is grace and mercy and love. Mm. Because, and, and in holding back, I mean, the reality is we, we know earlier on, you know, in, in, in Genesis, we hear of an account where God pours out his judgment. Yeah. But in his grace, it keeps this one family in order that the good news mm. and the faithfulness of God will spread across the earth. But from generation to generation, what soon happens after that mm. is a Tower of Babel. Yeah. And no, let's, let's elevate ourselves. Let's be, let's, let's live for ourselves. And what mm. does God do? He says, okay, like, I'm not going to send and destroy you all again because <laughs> I promised I wouldn't do that. Mm. Mm. I'm a loving God. I, I want you to come to the truth. Yeah. And so he decides to scatter them and to mix their languages up. Mm. You know, and from some of that, some people responded, mm. you know, and again and again and again, we see God provide opportunity after opportunity mm. after opportunity mm. because he's a loving God and yeah. a merciful God. Yeah. And he wants us to come mm. into right relationship with him. Mm. And so we need to take hold of those opportunities God gives us yeah. and respond to them. Mm. So, and that might be again and again, and that might be again sure. part, part of the sanctification process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because let's be honest, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. You have, I have. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not one who's without sin. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure there are days where you fall short and I fall short. Mm. But God in his mercy, mm. Mm. God in his mercy pours it out of yeah. us with grace and with love. And he'll speak the truth in again. Mm. And we just lodge mm. that lie and mm. enter into the truth again. Yeah. Who he is. And that's his love. Mm. And that's his truth together. Hand in hand. And it's the mercy of God. Yeah. The grace of God that we yeah. see at work. Uh, so good. That's so good. And I think, I, I, I think we were chatting earlier about John chapter eight. And I think, I, th I think this phrase, "the truth will set you free," I think it's probably used in courts quite often and quite a lot of other places. Yeah. But I think we kind of forget the little bit before that. Like we said, "Context is king," <laughs> where, yeah. where, where Jesus says that my word is truth. Yeah. You will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. Yeah. So, in one sense, it's as if Jesus is saying, um, "The truth isn't just this airy fairy thing that's floating in the air." No the truth is my word and you will know it. It's like, you know, you need to grab hold of that and then that will set you free. So I guess my question is, well, why does the truth of Christ set us free? How does, how do tr how does truth lead to freedom? Yeah, it's a really, really good question. Let me put it another way to start with, okay? So in my mug, I've got a cup of tea, right? Coffee, isn't it? Yeah, coffee. <laughs> it's coffee. Yeah. The truth of that is it's coffee. Yeah. Okay. But the point is, we can easily be deceived as we've been talking about. Mm. We can easily be led astray. And it's very easy to take something which is a half truth because it's a hot drink tea, right? Mm. And, and take that mm. and apply it. So when we're talking about truth, and I think this is where, um, when we were talking about earlier that sometimes deception can even creep into the church. Yeah. Okay. That we have to understand Jesus in his fullness. Mm. In, his con in the context, the full context of the Bible, the full narrative of the Bible, who yeah. is Jesus, that he's the son of God. You know, what did Jesus say with regards to truth? And, and so when we're talking about you'll know the truth and, we're tr and the truth will set you free, it's, it's understanding Jesus in his fullness, okay? So what do I mean by that? Yes, that when he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, there's no other way to the Father except through me, fundamental, mm. okay? It's what we call a fundamental doctrine within mm. the church, okay? Mm. You know, that he is fully God and fully man. Mm. You know, that he wasn't simply just a man who was indwelt by the Holy Spirit, mm. uh, which some people use as an argument, therefore, that they can go and perform mm. amazing signs and wonders, mm. you know, in, in the light of, you know, mm. that Jesus was just like them. Mm. I and mean, that's a heresy that we mm. see back at Babel, right? Yeah, you know, that we're like God. Yeah. So we have to understand who Jesus is in his entirety, but right there at the, at, the, at the basis, right there at the basis, is it says that those who call upon the name of the mm. Lord, mm. the Lord will be saved. Mm. And Lord 
means that I'm no longer Lord of my life. Yeah. That he is Lord of yeah. my life. Yeah. That I'm looking to him. I'm no longer leaning upon myself. I'm no mm. longer seek, seek, uh, simply seeking to live for myself. Mm. I mean, when Jesus wanted the people, uh, sorry, when God wanted people set apart from self through Israel, he gave them the law and the yeah. first law is you will have no other gods apart from me. Mm. When Jesus was asked that, you know, what's the greatest uh, commandment of the law? He says, it's to love the Lord your God with all your mm. heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm. You know, mm. a lot, some people twist that and say, oh, it's really important that you love yourself <laughs> there and have self-love. No, what he's saying there is you don't have a problem loving yourself. Mm. You don't have a problem living for yourself, yeah. living to, to satisfy the desires of your flesh and to put yourself above others. No, he says, if you want to be my disciple, Deny yourself, mm. take up your cross, mm. live for me, follow me. Mm. So by that, what my understanding is, therefore, of the truth that sets you free is the truth that you're no longer living for self, yeah. but you've died to self yeah. and that you're living for him. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he says wide is the road that leads to destruction, narrow. Why is it narrow? Mm. Why is it narrow? Mm. Because it's hard. Mm. It's hard to say, right, I'm going to leave those things behind. But that's what it means. Um, and so, you know, many, many walk the way of the highway, which is easy, <laughs> yeah. you know, and some who even say, yeah, I love Jesus plus X, Y, Z. Mm. But Jesus says, no, you're not to have any other love. Mm. That, that may be your first love, mm. your love alone. So, so that for me is my understanding of what the truth is. Yeah. When it comes to setting us free it is denying self mm. and looking to him and understanding that he is Lord. What does it mean that he's Lord? Yeah. It means that he's Lord because he was the one that the Father sent, the one that the Father promised that we were talking about earlier through the Old Testament, mm. fulfilled. He came to walk amongst us, telling us to repent for the kingdom of God is near at hand. Mm -hmm. That what he was about to do was to go to the cross. That was the whole point in that conversation with Thomas. I'm about to clear off soon, mate. <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to be leaving you, yeah. but don't worry, I'm going to, the thing I'm about to do is going to open up yeah. the way. Yeah. It's going to be the truth that's going to set you free. Yeah. It's going to be the life that's poured out for mm. all who believe and call upon me as Lord. Mm. He went to the cross mm. and he took the punishment that you and I deserve for living for self. Yeah. The selfishness, the pride, the sin, and he took it all upon himself. Mm. Dying a death in order to then come back from the grave three days later, conquering over death, defeating the serpent, crushing his head, yeah. doing away with doing away with the great deceiver. Yeah. So that we might then come into the truth mm. and come into his kingdom. Mm. But that requires one thing of you and I. It's completely free. Mm. But it requires one thing of you and I, that we are prepared to say, I'm no longer live mm -hmm. to serve myself. I'm no longer Lord of my life. Mm. He is. Mm. And I'll tell you what, that's liberating. Yeah. That's liberating. Mm. And that's what he means. The truth will set you free, yeah. free to be liberated. I don't have to rely upon myself yeah. for salvation. Yeah. I rely upon Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's done the work for me. Mm. That's, that's joy. That's freedom. It's good news. Yeah, it's good news. And I think, I think it's interesting what you said about freedom, actually, how, how that, tr I mean, in one sense, I guess maybe a good way to, to kind of put that, to, to, to summarize that is actually we are most free not when we have the capacity to sin as much as we want to or live how we want to live, but we're actually most free when we are closest to Christ, yeah. when we are dead to self and alive in him. And I guess the world defines freedom as being able to do whatever you want, yeah. whenever you want, living for you. Yeah. Actually, I tried that. Yeah, <laughs> we all have, right? We all have, right? <laughs> it didn't work. It led yeah. me to want to commit suicide. Yeah, exactly. And by the grace of God, he rescued So me. it's not freedom, really, is it? Because actually Jesus says, if you sin once, you're a slave to sin. So actually, every time we buy into that freedom in speech yeah. marks, if you're watching on audio, <laughs> um, we actually just become more enslaved. Yeah. But actually, biblical freedom is actually not what we are um, free to do. It's actually what we're free from, yeah. right? That we're free from the bondage of sin, the bondage of lies, that actually now we can walk hand in hand with Christ because we know that he is the truth and that leads to yeah. immense freedom. That's, that's good news, right? right? Yeah, and it takes us right back to the garden because what did the deceiver tell them? Yeah, if you eat of this, yeah. If you eat of this, he knows you will be like me. Yeah, we're nothing like him. Sure, we're nothing like him. Mm. But that's what we like to think, mm. and that's what we'd like to do mm. to make ourselves god of our life. Yeah, 
but when we try and do it that way, mm. it, it, it's always messed up. Mm. Mm. I mean, you, you've only got to turn on the news to see the extent of it. Yeah. You know, we can see the darkness in our world. Mm. There's, there's no escape in it. And, you know, you might, might be sat there watching this and thinking, yeah, but, you know, I'm not doing those things. But we all have a part to play in it. Mm. And we've all been led astray in one way or another. Yeah. But by his grace, his kindness, he's revealed himself. He's shown us the way. Yeah. He's shown us the truth. Yeah. And gives us each an opportunity to respond to that. Mm. And then, yeah, I can't, I can't begin to tell you how different my life is mm. as a result of Jesus. Mm. You know? When I tried to live for myself, I ended by the side of a road, wanting to throw myself in front of a car. Yeah. And God broke in. Mm. And he turned my life around. And now I'm in a happy marriage with the most amazing wife. Yeah. Two kids. Does it mean that I don't suffer? Mm. That I don't have pain mm. that I don't struggle mm. absolutely I do mm. and Jesus said you will have trouble you will yeah. have suffering actually sometimes to put yourself out even like this will come mm. with its consequences sure but the peace of knowing that he is lord of my life that mm. he's got it yeah I know there's a future that is far greater than I can possibly imagine yeah where one day God's going to come back and it's going to be a restored new heaven and new earth yeah now we're going to be with him in that place and there's going to be no more sickness, no more death. Mm. That, that's what provides the peace. That's mm. what provides the joy in the midst of suffering and yeah. trial. Yeah. And, that's, and that is the gospel. That is the truth. It mm. brings liberty. It brings freedom yeah. and strength mm. for each day. Mm. And if you don't know it, I'm praying that for you. Yeah. No, that's so good, mate. Yeah. And I think, I think uh, like you said about actually just because we know Christ and we've come to this truth because the Holy Spirit has shown us who Jesus is doesn't mean that we... We get a gout, a jail free pass for yeah. struggling in this side of eternity. And I, and I think, you know, we were chatting the other day actually on uh, online on Instagram, we made a post called uh, Don't Cling to Promises That God Never Made. Yeah. And actually, this is where it all comes to truth is if we cling to a promise that Jesus has never actually spoken, yeah. actually, we are going to be left empty handed. Yeah. But because, you know, he says himself, my word is truth. Yeah. If we cling to what he does say, which is in this world, you have trouble. Yeah. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. And that, then, then we can trust that. And I think that's the assurance, isn't it? Of the, when we put our trust in Christ, anything he says about us, whether that's a, uh, uh, you know, like an, an affirmation of I love you, or whether that's a challenge of conviction of you need to turn from this. Yeah. We can trust him yeah. because he's proven himself trustworthy yeah. and truthful, yeah. you know? So I think the big question, perhaps, perhaps obviously truth is, you know, a philosophical thing in one sense and a moral thing, but actually I think more than that, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a person. And it's also an issue of, of kingship, like you've said, of do I accept that I'm no longer the center of my life, that I'm no longer the main character, yeah. that I come under the author, yeah. and I but somehow play a part in his story, yeah. but I'm not actually the author yeah. anymore. That's that's a tough thing to accept. Isn't yeah, it? that's 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 really good. I like what you say there about uh, part, we are part and part of his story, but we're not the center of the story. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you've probably heard me say this before. I'm, I'm sure we've we've had this conversation before, where I, you know I've said. You know, many people will approach this and say, oh, I'm looking for myself and I'm looking for myself. And, mm. you know, and sometimes we look for, you know, the story of David and what are your giants? <laughs> and, I, and I turn around and say, it's not about you. You're not David. <laughs> David was a, was, a, was a type of Christ. He was showing yeah. us what Christ was going to do, that Christ is the one who rescues and redeems. Yeah. He's the one who defeats our giants. He's the one who fights on our behalf. He's the one who mediates on our behalf in light of that. Yeah. And how do I respond? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do I respond? Mm. I mean, the application should always be that I want to go lower and lift you up higher, Jesus, because mm. you are you are awesome. Mm. I mean, awesome is simply reserved for him alone, right? Yeah. You know, because he is. Yeah. So, you know, what is what, what is the outworking of this? Mm. This Jesus is Lord. It's not lip service. Mm. It's an action. It's a it's an inward you know, change in my life where I'm saying, okay, if I'm not living for self, what does that now look like living for yeah. Jesus? Yeah. You know, and when you discover a truth, right, about something, I mean, we all know it. We've, we've seen the gossip columns and all that sort of stuff, right? You know, I've read something even this week about, you know, a famous rock star who's had a child out of wedlock and, mm. you know, everyone's talking about it. It's like, mm. you know, when the truth is brought into the light, everyone wants to talk about it. Mm. For you and for me, for, for us who put our trust in Jesus, this is the greatest truth that has been revealed. And we want everyone to know about it. So that's the outworking, right, yeah. of this faith. What is my response to this gospel? Mm. To go and tell others. Mm. 
to live out my life in light of what Jesus has done, recognizing that he was prepared to take me in my wretched state mm. and put my feet solidly upon him yeah. and transform my life. And now to live in light of that in a way in which yeah. I love other people. Mm. You know, this is what we were talking about earlier about grace and walking with patience with mm. people. You know, because that's how he has been with me. Sure. You know, to forgive people when they've wronged you because yeah. great is his faith, faithfulness mm. and great is his forgiveness towards us. And so how do we outwork that? We outwork it by following Jesus's mm -hmm. way and example mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. So, you know, you can't be a static Christian. No. You can't be a static Christian, mm. you know, because love has compelled us yeah. Yeah. into good deeds. Mm. That's really good, man. It's really good. Well, I think I think maybe I've got one 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 or two more questions, but I, but I feel like we could chat about this for ages. Oh, we could. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I I was I was reading Judges twenty one. We were chatting about this before, yeah. and I guess for me this is an indication of the danger of relative truth, the danger of finding goodness, righteousness, truth, freedom, morality in our in ourself apart from God. And um, maybe if you're watching online, just for time's sake, maybe go and read the whole of Judges 21 context. Okay. Um, but in verse 25, uh, we, we read this, that in those days, Israel's ha Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. And when you read that th this chapter, you see how Israel is an absolute anarchy. You know, it's an absolute disarray oh, yes, because there's no uh, foundation. There's no like epicenter, if you will, of truth and morality and righteousness. And I was I, I was hearing a quote from John Piper talking about relativism and my truth, your truth. And he said, um, just wanted to get your, your thoughts on it. He said that um, relativism is the breeding ground in, in one sense for, for all evil. That actually he, he, he referenced Hitler of saying in his own eyes, Hitler was, was, was fine because it was true for him that Jewish people need to be eradicated. It, it was true for Hitler yeah. that, that, that in his own eyes, he was correct. That Hitler didn't come to like an objective standard of truth. And that's quite an extreme example, yeah, yeah. But, very extreme. but it's very extreme. Yeah. And obviously we see it in smaller ways, but I thought that was actually a really interesting example that if we don't have an objective standard of truth, which is God, yeah. then actually there is no line yeah. of, of right and wrong. No, there isn't. And, 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 and so, so I guess, I don't really know what my question is actually, but uh, uh, I, think I, 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 I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. So, um, Relative truth will always sit in line with relative morality. Mm. Okay, so if if God is true, yeah, then God gets to define the terms of what is morally right. Right. Okay. That's good. Yeah. If we live in a world where truth is relative, morality is going to therefore be uh, relative because yeah. there is either absolute truth and therefore absolutely morally what is right and wrong. Yeah. And of course, the Bible talks about this, doesn't it? It says it goes later on, it gives over to their lust, uh, the lustful desires of, of the flesh. We read that in the context of the New Testament as well. Yeah. We hear about how uh, people will uh, sway away, uh, 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 will move away from sound doctrines mm. and give themselves over to the things that they want to hear. Yeah. So what is all this? What is all this? That it is deception. That's what we're yeah. talking about right? right earlier on. It is, it is deception that pulls us away mm. from what is morally right, from what is morally true. Yeah. And it's what we were saying earlier, who gets to define the terms? Yeah. Do we mm. get to define the, the terms because we're Lord of our life mm. or does he, the creator of all things, the one who made you and I to be image bearers of him who is totally corrupted because we're serving ourselves mm -hmm. rather than serving him. You know, that you turn on the news and you see, you know, devastation hitting our own, you know, our own nation with, you know, murders on the yeah. increase and everything that's happened more recently mm -hmm. in the news, you know, and you turn, turn on and see what's going on in Ukraine and Russia and you mm -hmm. turn on the news and you see what's going on, you know, mm -hmm. overseas here and there. I mean, this is the result, you know, you just referenced Hitler, mm -hmm. you know, it's that, being deluded yeah. through self-deception yeah. or external deception, yeah. you know, because the enemy's planting those thoughts all yeah. the time, yeah. that lead us into absolute yeah. mayhem, yeah. Yeah. absolute depravity. Yeah. But mm. the good news, mm. <laughs> the good news is that Christ has provided a way out of that. Mm. And Christ has promised, and I have absolute surety in this because Everything that was foretold about Jesus yeah. has found its fullness in him coming when he says he's going to come back. And one day it's all going to be 
put right. Yeah. When he comes to that final judgment, morally, he is going to be the judge. Mm. How do we know what's right from wrong? We go to a court of law, we look at the evidence and the, the law. Sure. That, you know, the, the, the chief lawyer, yeah. you know, right at the top there, the judge yeah. sits there and passes judgment and he will one day yeah. pass judgment and he will deal with the great deceiver. Yeah. That's the, that's the awesome thing about this. He's going to deal with the great deceiver who is the root behind it all. Yeah. And he's going to be done away with. He's going to be thrown into the lake of yeah. fire and yeah. be no more. Yeah. And, you know, we will live in a, an eternity mm. of joy, of peace, of yeah. righteousness, yeah. of health. Yeah. For all time. Yeah. That's so good. And that's because Jesus' word and promise is true. Yes. The whole, I mean, I mean that promise of eternity the promise of salvation all depends on one question, which is, is God who he says he is? Right. Because if he is, yeah. fantastic. Our salvation is promised in him. Our right. eternity is, um, we know that he will never lose, forsake us. But if if he's not true, as well, we're wasting our time here yeah. and we're all screwed. <laughs> Let's put it like that. But because Jesus has proven, he has shown to us that his word is true, that he is true. He's been affirmed by God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. He is, his life is actually at death, his resurrection yes. through the prophets. Yeah. Through his, through his historical existence, we, we, we say, wow, okay, he's, he's, he's at least claiming that. I've got to do something with that, like you said. Yeah. And, and I just wonder, perhaps the reason why our world has fallen so short on truth and we no longer stand on the line of right and wrong mm -hmm. is because actually Christ is now optional. You know, if we look historically about how nations were formed, when Jesus was the, sure. was the, was the cornerstone of, mm -hmm. of morality, of law, sure. You know, nations sure. obviously they've still struggled, but thrived, yeah. right? But but when we see now that nations are built on, actually, here's what I think. You know, here's what is popular. Mm -hmm. We actually see that doesn't lead to freedom, like we said earlier. That leads to to chaos. Yeah. So truth is is good news, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we live in a. I think we started with this, didn't we? We we live in a society that is is inclusive. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. And uh, Christianity is inclusive yeah because for god so love the world right they send this one and one and son that whoever believes in him shall have shall not perish but have eternal life right so it's inclusive in that nature but it is exclusive in the context of you have to make that choice mm -hmm. right the problem is in the world in which we live of relative truth is actually what often happens and we see it it's growing it's a growing thing actually across the world with universalism you know that that always leads to to christ but hang on what did christ say himself mm. no i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through yeah. me so you can't have both yeah you can't have both because mm -hmm. if jesus said that then there is only one way yeah and everybody's saying no no all paths lead to jesus but or to god but Jesus said it doesn't, so it falls apart. Mm. In the same way that relative truth actually falls apart, mm. doesn't it? Because yeah. is relative truth an absolute truth? Mm. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So it's the great deception. Yeah. And uh, and Jesus is the truth that shines the light. Yeah. And exposes yeah. what is dark. Yeah. In order that we might be illuminated mm. and come into the light, yeah, and be bearers of this light, yeah, into yeah. the world, yeah, that's so good, that's so good. And I, th I feel like this episode would be incomplete. We've we spoke all about God the Father, God the Son, without speaking about the Holy Spirit, good. which Jesus calls the Spirit of Truth. And in yeah. fact, in that in that long prayer where we said where Jesus says, "Sanctify them with your truth," He actually yeah. says to His disciples, "It's better if I go, yeah. and you have Him." Yeah. And, that's, and you think about that, and that's, whoa, yeah. the disciples must have been thinking, yeah. that's outrageous. And and actually, it's impossible for us to know that Jesus is truth without the Holy Spirit, right? right. right. So so maybe, maybe which is, is, yeah, we, we did touch on it a bit earlier on, didn't we? We were talking about someone who's struggling with relative truth, and we say yeah. that that's not our work, that's the work of the Spirit. So what does the Spirit do? Sure. The Spirit testifies to the Son. Okay. Right? You, you've got to love the Trinity, yeah. the, the Trinity and what they do. So God honours the Son, and the Son, Jesus, is honouring the Father. Mm. He sends the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is honouring Jesus, yeah. who's pointing us to God, the, the, the visible, he's the visible image of the invisible God. So there's this beautiful mm. unity within the, within the Trinity. But the Holy Spirit's core role is that he testifies to, to your heart, to my heart, to, to everyone's heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord, mm. right? 
that he's the one who breathes that into us. He's the one who breathes the truth of this and allows it to rest upon our lives. He is the one who is doing that sanctifying work yeah. in us yeah. as we read this truth, allowing it to take its root in our life and to do that transformative work. Yeah. So, yeah. And the great thing is, again, he sends that out mm. freely mm. to us. A free gift yeah. you know the holy spirit when you call upon the name of the lord you receive his mm. spirit mm. in your life and what does the spirit do as well it seals the promise mm. Mm. says that the spirit seals the promise yeah. of god upon yeah. our life yeah. that we are sealed in jesus that our life is hidden in him that's what the spirit's done it's like you know the old school letters or <laughs> if you watch taskmaster you know they've always got that little wax bit yeah it's like sealed it on and it's god's stamp yeah. by the Holy Spirit upon our lives yeah. to lead us and to do that work in us and to bring about that fruit in our life, yeah, yeah. the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. What, a, what a gift. Yeah. What yeah. a gift That's right. for you and I. Yeah. But yes, all the time testifying to who Jesus Christ is yeah. so that you and I know that he is Lord. Yeah. That he's Lord of our life. It's, it's the Spirit that will convict us. Yeah. So when we read this word, and challenge us that when we're out of line, when we're thinking mm. the wrong things to bring us back into truth. Yeah. You know, you look at the work even of Pentecost, mm. you know, and all those signs and wonders that took place. What was, was the purpose of that? Mm. Was so that when Peter got up and spoke the gospel, mm. there was the evidence to come with it. Yeah. And so the spirit is evidence, mm. you know, within my life, within your life for pointing us to Jesus yeah. and the truth of who he is yeah, because it's Jesus Christ who's Lord. Yeah, that's so good. And that's beautiful what he said about the Trinity and reminded when Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will, he says to his disciples, will remind you of everything I've said, will yeah. teach you everything I've said and that... Uh, like, they didn't get it at that. No, they didn't. They did. <laughs> Which, if you don't go, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Holy Spirit it's a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's that, that, that I mean, in one sense, that kind of makes you like, just breathe a sigh of relief a bit yeah. of actually, yeah. well, like, I'm not the... I'm not the orchestrator of, of my salvation here. Actually, the Holy Spirit is, it, his job, his role is is to actually be the constant pointer, the constant hope, well, not poker, that's probably not a big word, but pointer yeah. to Jesus that, the, the, and the, that, like you said, testifies within us. And remind in, in Romans where Paul says that, after whoever uh, calls the name of the Lord should be saved, and then he says, no one can say that Jesus is Lord without the Holy Spirit. So actually, this whole conversation is a waste of time without the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Trying to muster up what is truth, what is truth, what is truth in a philosophy class without the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yes, yeah, right. It's useless, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so that is the thing we need to know. Yeah. And again, you know, you think back to Port Mars Hill and all the philosophers of the day. You know, they philosophy means seeker of wisdom, right? You know. Yeah. How do we get true wisdom? Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit who shows us who wisdom is. Yeah. That wisdom is. Yeah. Jesus Himself. Yeah. That every word he speaks is true and mm. transformative. So, mm. you know, yeah, we can philosophize, you know, and have, you know, a whole conversation around philosophy and stuff. But you're right, without the spirit, mm. without the spirit who breathes the life into, yeah. our, into our being, you know, the very breath of God that came in the first place yeah. upon Adam and Eve and formed them, that we need the, breath, the breath of the Holy Spirit to come upon us in order that we can call yeah. upon the name of yeah. God. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so good. Well, I thought we'd end with one scripture, and maybe if you felt comfortable, maybe you could pray for us uh, as we as we go. And anyone who watches this video, I was I was reading Psalms earlier, and um, like I said, context is king. If you were to read the first half, you go, oh, "That sounds lovely." So, so the first half of the psalm said this: "It says the Lord is near to all who call on Him." So if we if we stop there, it wouldn't make sense. But then the psalmist adds a comma and says, "To all who call on Him in truth." Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting, actually. That God not only cares about being known, He cares about being known correctly. Yes, you know that He 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 is yeah. about His glory. You know, I was reading earlier Isaiah forty three, the amount of times God says I, my, that that actually because God is perfect, yeah. He can care about His glory. If we were God, it yeah. would be selfish, right? Yeah. But because He is perfect, He cares about us not just knowing Him but knowing Him correctly, and that comes back to the role of the Holy Spirit. So I thought that'd be a great place to land. Actually, yeah. is that the Lord is near to all who call on him. Yes and amen. Yeah. To all who call on him in truth. Yeah. And how do we know that truth? Yeah. Through asking the Holy Spirit. Through us Holy Spirit. And by through his word. Yeah. Through his word. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it comes back to what we're saying earlier with regards to which Jesus are we talking about? Yeah. Are we talking about the Jesus of our own making? Yeah. That appeals to our flesh? Or are we talking about the Jesus who is Lord and King who yeah. testifies of himself that he and the Father are one? Yeah. 
Yeah, that he is king of kings and that he is Lord of lords, that he is risen, that he's coming again. Yeah. Amen. Can have, it's good stuff. Well, Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Mate, it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you, mate. Would you, uh, yeah, would you mind praying for us as we go? And then we'll uh, do a cringy outro or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great, let's pray. Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that uh, you love us enough and have so much mercy for us that you would, uh, you would send your son to reveal the truth of your great love for us, your longing for us to come into right relationship with you. But we recognize that uh, we far too often lean in on our endless understanding. We, we lean in on ourself. And, and what happens with that is that we end up elevating ourselves over you. And Lord, we just ask you to forgive us for that. And Lord, we know that you're graceful and uh, that you're loving and that you're quick to forgive. And Lord, we just pray that by your spirit and through your word, you would lead us more and more and more. Anyone watching this into the truth. Lord, if, if anyone watching this is wrestling with, with the things that we spoke about, Lord, we pray by your spirit, you would lead them into all truth. And Lord, know that their truth will set them free. So we thank you that you're gracious. We thank you that you're loving. We thank you that you're merciful and that you're good in all your ways. And Lord, we thank you that you've gone before us and prepared a place for us. And Lord, we say you are Lord, you are King. Be lifted high. Mm. We pray you be lifted higher and higher in our nation, higher and higher in our lives, higher and higher across this world that all may see and all may call upon your name. Mm -hmm. Calling you, Lord, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We love you and we worship you. Amen. Amen. Mate, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I uh, hope this episode has been a blessing to you guys. Um, yeah, I'm still getting used to the whole outro thing. So I won't say the whole like, share, subscribe thing. But if you want to do that, it'd be great. Um, yeah, do yeah, you know what? Do it. Andy said to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we hope this episode has been a blessing to you guys. You can find us on all socials at Equipped Collective. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Andy, thanks so much, mate. Bless us, mate. See you guys soon.